When the first time I saw the new Asus ZenBook Duo transform from a conventional laptop to a towering dual screen unit, my thought was now that looks cool. But right after that, my mind came back to its natural state of skepticism and I asked myself, what else can it do? Well, that's precisely what I am going to find out in this Asus ZenBook Duo 2024 review. But first, a short history lesson. The whole idea of foldable laptops took flight in 2020. When Corona was making everyone flip out, Microsoft and Lenovo were interested in trying to fold a computer. They aimed for something as handy as a tablet but as capable as a laptop, leading to the creation of the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Fold. Then came the Asus ZenBook 17 Fold in 2022, featuring a giant 17.3-inch display which worked as a 12.5-inch laptop, a tablet and even an extended dual display setup. Then, as this form factor matured, we saw the likes of Lenovo YogaBook 9i, a proper dual-screen foldable laptop, but it kind of had a portability problem as the laptop's keyboard had to be packed separately. So by learning from the past emerged the Asus ZenBook Duo 2024, a laptop which packs the productivity of two screens and no compromises on portability. So has Asus done it? Is this the point where you can accept foldable laptops as not a niche product? Well. Here's my answer. Firstly, I want to talk about what this form factor gets right and that is the utilization of space. Like I'm barely taking any more space than a normal laptop and yet I have measurably more real screen estate. And not just that, all of this takes only as much space in my bag as a normal laptop would. Even the laptop charger is following the same theme because just look at it. It is smaller than any laptop charger I have ever seen and even smaller than some phone chargers. And in case you were wondering, this is a GAN charger and these are smaller because the material allows for more efficient power conversion and less heat generation, which means that these things can be made really small. The next good thing is this inbuilt stand, which allows you to adjust the angle of the display. And in case you want to use this laptop thing just as a normal laptop, it goes back all the way in. And according to Asus, there are three main ways in which you can use this machine. You can use it like a laptop, you can use it with a vertical screen, and you can use it horizontally. But I also found a fourth way in which you can attach it to a monitor and use it like that. Also, Asus is advertising this thing as a device which two people can use to consume at the same time. And that works, but only up to a certain extent. You see, the keyboard will only appear on one end once you set up the media which both of you want to consume. Then you can go ahead and use the touch display to enjoy your content. But if you want to navigate individually, then that will be an issue because this is still just one computer and can only take one input at a time. In terms of ports, you will find a good variety here. You have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, an HDMI 2.1, a 3.5mm jack and a USB type A port. Now the Core Ultra 9 supports four external displays and if we use that math, then this particular unit can power three more displays in addition to the one that's already attached here. Although this laptop is engineered beautifully, it turns out that it does have some issue and they begin to arise once you look a bit closely. Let's say you're sitting on your desk working away. Now you want to raise this display hinge with just one hand. Well, you cannot just do that so easily. Let me show you. If you will try to do that with just one hand, then after a certain point, the entire setup will begin to push forward. Now, what you can do here is that you can press this display and then press it upwards. But I think that it puts unnecessary pressure on the display lid as well as on the hinge. However, closing the laptop is fairly easy. In total, the build quality of the device feels good and the hinge feels solid enough that it doesn't matter that at which angle you set up the screen, it stays there. The Bluetooth keyboard is also a plastic unit, but it is rigid enough that you can keep it on your lap and type. But don't expect much as the keyboard is not very thick and will start to feel flimsy upon extensive use. Also, the keyboard has its own battery life and it can last around a week or so. 
and you can charge it using a type c cable as well moreover when this keyboard is sandwiched between the laptop its type c port appears as another charging port so don't get confused now before we talk about performance i want to quickly compare this setup with the traditional dual screen setup so firstly the portability and the ease of use over here are off the charts However, in that case, the screen size is the same. Both are 14 inches. Whereas I can change the screen size to my liking over here. And thirdly, while this setup costs me a whole lot less money, I can even take this thing on an airplane without any issues. So like you saw, there are pros and cons to both of them. And what might work for you may not work for someone else. So let's talk about performance. Now, this is an area where I think I am a bit underwhelmed. Let me explain. You see, only a few weeks ago, I tested the HP Omen Transient 14, a 14-inch gaming laptop powered by Intel Core Ultra 7, and that chip performed better than this one. Now, you may ask why. Well, the answer is because it consumed more power. But again, your next question would be, why did it consume more power? Well, because it had a better cooling system. Just take a look at these synthetic scores and you'll understand what I'm talking about. But then again, these two are different form factors because when you compare it to another thinner light device, then the Core Ultra 9 easily beats the Core Ultra 7 chip. Overall, this is the kind of performance which will help you easily do all the basic things like browsing, streaming or some creative related workload as well. Then in terms of battery life as well, this laptop is decent, getting around 6 hours 34 minutes with both displays on and around 7 hours 38 minutes with just one display on. And since this thing comes with Intel R graphics, I did try to run some gaming benchmarks and here's the result. So in conclusion, the Asus ZenBook Duo is a niche but a very refined product in a segment which is slowly but surely growing. In terms of performance, it could use a boost in the coming generation but in its current shape and form, it is a completely ready and well-made product which fulfills multiple roles very easily. But like I said, it is still a niche product which is a need for more app support. I mean, wouldn't it be awesome if two players could play split-screen games on this? Just imagine that. But for that to happen, you need support for app developers. And for that to happen, Asus needs to sell a lot of these. So the question is, will you buy one? Let us know in the comment section below and I will see you guys in the next term.